Carmela, do you know what the German word for sparkling wine is? I probably should, but I can't recall, no. Okay, get ready. You ready? I'm ready. The word for German sparkling wine is sect. What? That's right. I said it's sect. You did. Okay. Are you ready to talk about some sect? I'm ready. Let's do it. Woo. Hello and welcome to the Wine Pair Podcast. I'm Joe, your sommelier of reasonably priced wine, and this is my wife and my wine pairing partner in crime, Carmela. Hi there. And we are the Wine Pair. Wow, that was a whole new look. That was, I don't know, I keep trying well, something different. I'm saying it's a whole new look, but nobody can actually see you. No, but, but if you can you know, see my look. Like, yeah, exactly, pointing impressive. to himself. Mm-hmm. And, okay, know. a quick orientation for those of you who may be new to the podcast in each episode. What we do is we learn about and we taste and we give our honest review of three wines that are reasonably priced. That means under $20 each and should be easy for you to find. And our podcast, Carmela, is made for people like us. People who love wine but want to learn more about wine, maybe find some new wines to explore, and just maybe feel more confident mm. when we talk about and order wines. Love it. So that's that's us. A, yeah, if that sounds like you too, you're in the right place, and you can drink along with us if you want to, as long as you're not driving. And we are proud to say that we are officially recommended by the editors of Decanter Magazine from their October issue, who call us fun, irreverent, chatty, and entertaining. Wow. Okay, Carmela, in this episode... We're going to get down to it, oh down and gosh. dirty. You're so excited about this. <laughs> I was just so You're happy. you like that... a 12-year-old boy. <laughs> We're going to talk about sect. <laughs> oh, my. what is That's up? right. Bubbly, wet, fizzy sect. It. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. You're taking this to a whole nother level, buddy. It's just kind of fun that the German word for sparkling wine is sect. But it's not S-E-X. It's sect. It's you can't different. Even, she can't even say the word sex. Well, okay. because no, it's not even that. I'm trying to. It's different. It's different. Okay. You're just, you just like hearing it the it's same just way. Funny. It's just funny to a 12 year old boy. That's <laughs> exactly. right. Exactly. Okay. Now, as we've said a million and a half times in our podcast, please, please, please do not call sparkling wine champagne. If it's not from the Champagne region of France, right? Right. So, if you're still in the habit of doing that, we're going to ask you to stop. Okay. What happens if they say it? Is there like a timeout chair? I don't, is I don't there, know. You know, detention. I don't know. I don't know. But we're gonna find. Hmm. There is gonna be. There, I think there will be a chair, punishment. I think a timeout chair is. We're gonna. How are we gonna monitor this? Huh? We, I, don't, I don't know. Hmm. You just. We're gonna be in the honor system. Okay. And the next time you're somewhere and you say champagne and you know it's not champagne or you're not sure, just put yourself in a timeout. Oh my! Or just correct yourself. <laughs> Better yet, like educate somebody about it. Right. That's right. That's right? right. And what happens if they hear somebody else call it champagne? When they it's should not? shame them. Whoa. Shame them incessantly. Wow. Just embarrass them. Make them feel bad. Whoa! Yeah. And say Joe from the Wine Pair Podcast. He's this a is, he, this is he's what a he jerk. To do. Yeah. And now <laughs> he's going to talk about sect. Okay. Oh, um, okay. I would say everyone listening to our podcast is aware of and probably enjoys and definitely buys sparkling wines made outside of the region of Champagne, France. Wouldn't you say that's probably true? I would think so. In fact, I would say the vast majority of bubbly that all of you out there in listening land are buying is probably not Champagne. Probably not. Yeah, so we're talking about wines like Prosecco from Italy and Cava from Spain and Cremant from France. We don't drink a lot of Champagne. No, no, we don't. We Mm. drink a lot of sparkling wine, but most of it's not Champagne. We we even sparkling wines from the U.S. and all over the place. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a lot of places that make sparkling wine. I think people don't know that, right? Right. But they actually are made all over the place. Believe it or not, Great Britain is supposed to be making some really good sparkling wines. Wow. Argentina makes... (sighs) Sparkling wines, and we did an episode mm-hmm. in February on sparkling wines from Argentina, episode 66, if you're so inclined. And we did a number of episodes during the holidays on different sparkling wines, including Cremont. Oh, right. But did you know, Carmela? What? There's a little fun fact hmm. for you today. Did you know that Germany not only makes sparkling wines that are called sect, mm-hmm. by the way. Mm-hmm. We know. But, th- but they are the world's third largest producer of sparkling wine. Of sect. Of sect. Wow. Actually, they're probably the largest producer of, of sect. sect. But, <laughs> right. But they're the third largest producer of sparkling wine That's in the amazing. world. That's amazing. I would never have guessed. Who's number one? We've talked about this before. Um, Number one must be, oh, you told me, but now I can't remember. Italy. 
Okay, well, I was going to say that, but then yeah. I figured, yeah. And number two is the United States. No, France. <laughs> okay, no, France. No. So, so Jeez, Germany. I'm like, oh, no, you're fine. I'm having a bad night no, tonight. No, you're good. All the you're sex good. talk. Is, wow, you know. <laughs> it's got you discombobulated. Exactly. <laughs> I said that. Okay, so it's, but Germany, you know, it's ahead of Spain. It's ahead of the U.S. It's, you know, but I don't think if people in the U.S., maybe people in other parts of the world are like, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have thought that Germany makes the third no. most sparkling wine. Mm, but see, what's the difference though between like the top, like Italy and France to Germany? Like, is it a large amount? Do I really need <laughs> to answer this question, or can I just skip over it because well, I'm not prepared? Okay, I just was. You just you know you bring up these things and it leads to other questions. I'm really sorry. No, you don't have to answer that. But like, I'm curious if it's like. And the ratio is. <laughs> so. Okay, fine. I'll look it up myself later. All right, good. Look it up, Club. Okay. You know, we can't answer all of your questions, ladies sure. and gentlemen. Sometimes you have to take care of yourself. You're right. You're right. right. I'm okay. Sorry. Okay. Another fun fact, Carmela, okay. about Germany and sparkling wine is that Germans are the largest consumers of sparkling wine per capita. Pa- yeah, they, they like are the party their, dogs. They like yeah, they're sparkling. I like yeah. the Germans. Yeah, well, although I do, uh, from what I'm learning out there in the interwebs, mm-hmm. the Germans kind of like their sparkling wine a little sweet, a little bit oh, on the sweet oh, side. Oh, 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 okay. So, and so they're drinking it too. It's not like other people in the world are drinking their their sparkling. We're going to talk about this in a second. You're like way ahead of the curve uh, as I'm, usual. I'm like way just behind like, and no, way ahead. ahead. Like way I'm ahead. just I'm a little off today. Yeah. You know? No, it's totally fine. <laughs> But um, no, again, so we usually like brut, which is dry, right. not dry, which is sweet when you're talking about sparkling mm. wine. But the Germans like their sweeter, you know, semi-sweet. So that's kind of interesting. Perfect must mean, does it no. mean sweet? No, no? it okay. doesn't. I don't think, maybe it does. I don't know. Hmm. Another thing oh. you can look up <laughs> on your own Shoot. at some point. Okay. <laughs> But, we got some homework to do this week. Woo. Oh gosh. Okay. I don't even. I'm so off script right now. I don't even know what we're oh, talking no, about. Oh no, off script. Like that's so novel. <laughs> Jeez. Did, I'm getting it. I'm getting know, hammered. I'm just getting hammered front, on both sides. Hammered. Now he's getting. Oh, I just want some sex. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> we do think you all though should have sparkling wine or sect any day of the week. <laughs> It's not just for special occasions. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm fully in agreement. <laughs> okay. So I think it's time to learn more about German sparkling wine. You don't need it wines. to be like Friday night. Yeah, no, exactly. You can just have sect anytime you want. Okay, we're going to talk about what makes them special, how they're made, and we're going to taste a few sparkling wines from Germany to see what we think and give them a little rating and review of our own. But first, Carmela... We got to do our shameless plug. That's right. So first, we want to start by saying thank you for listening to us and for supporting our show. And if you have not had the chance to do so yet, now would be a really awesome time to subscribe to our podcast. It's a free way to support us. And then you never have to miss a show where we talk about sect or whatever it is. Right. And a huge thank you to all of you who have subscribed already. We really appreciate it. Subscribers, you. Mm -hmm. And another great way to support us for free is to leave a nice rating and review on our website or on Apple Podcasts or other podcasts service so people will go hey these guys not so bad not so bad and you can also follow us and see fun pictures of the wines we're tasting and trying today on instagram at the wine bear podcast Mm -hmm. and you can contact us on our website and get fun things from our show notes and all that kind of junk at the wine i am totally off tonight no No, you're not and as we do every week we'll tell you someone we think you should tell about the wine bear podcast and this week my notes say update, so I forgot to do it. Oh, but who man. should we have you tell this week? I've got an um, idea. Okay, well then you say it. You've Anybody got... who's German of, of German descent. Well, sure. How about that? That's just like the obvious one. But hopefully, oh. hopefully they'll be telling the, us or them. Us and them. Right, right. About what? About their sparkling wine. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Just tell somebody, please. Yeah, tell somebody. Week, it's like, you know what? It's the wild card. Again, it's tell. on it's on you. You have to take right. responsibility for yourself, people. <laughs> yeah. We can't tell you everything. No, right. I mean, this you week, tell people, somebody. you <laughs> you tell us who you've told this week. There. Please okay? let us know. We're it's tired. an assignment. It's an assignment. <laughs> Coming up with new people. <laughs> 
<laughs> We're tired of telling you who to tell. Take some responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Come to us next time. Okay. okay. All right. So let's go back to sect and talk a little bit more about this is gonna be the dumbest ongoing joke. Oh my it's God. so not funny you love already. This. I know, but it's, it's already it's not funny. funny. It's tear chattering between like a twelve year old boy and like a dad joke now. Yeah. <laughs> and both of them are not very funny. No. Okay. Uh, but let's learn a little bit more about sparkling wines from Germany because you were asking about them. Yes, okay? I was. And uh sparkling wines in Germany have been around for more than 200 years, so it's not brand new, okay? Wow. But as you asked, not a lot of sect makes it outside of Germany. Okay. So they do consume a lot of their own sect. <laughs> wow. wow. They <laughs> so, like their own kind. Yeah. Huh? So unless you've been to or are from Germany or Austria. They're the only ones <laughs> having the sect. <laughs> you might be the only ones having sect, as far as we know. Okay. And I think wow. also uh, German sparkling wine. I'm going to have to stop saying it. It doesn't often show up on wine lists in restaurants, even though they make a ton of it. Uh, and I, I think it is finding its, its way. It's X-rated. It's X-rated. Yeah, they can't put it on there. We can't show that to our people. Okay. But I think it's starting to grow a little bit in popularity. And it's probably something to keep an eye on. Hmm. And then sect, this is another thing you asked. It does cover a wide range of grapes and styles. So like the name sparkling wine in the U.S., which could kind of mean anything that's sparkling and wine and, you know, all sorts of stuff. Sect covers wines that are made in the traditional method, the champagne method. It covers wines that are make, made like Prosecco and the Charmat method. And they can be white or red or rosé. So it's oh, all, all sorts. So sect a again. A red sparkling sect. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, like, it's that wasn't even funny, and I like. Well, you didn't even mean for it to be funny. <laughs> no, but uh, like any sparkling wine, it's a style. It's not a varietal, right. right? So now, according to most of the research I could find online, sect does not have an awesome reputation because, again, it's often considered sweet and maybe not the best quality, which may be one of the reasons why it doesn't make it outside of Germany all that often. And then according to one article I read, and you can find it in the show notes for this episode if you visit our website and go to the show, the show notes, mm-hmm. um, one way to determine the quality of sect, and this is going to seem really obvious, is by price. I mean, if you pay a lot for sect, it should be good. Holy cow, buddy. <laughs> now we're going down a dark road. But if you have to pay more than 15 you shouldn't have to pay more than about 15 to $30 oh, for a okay. sect, for good sect. Okay. Okay. Wow. So, <laughs> Tears so like children. Wow. Okay, all we sect. don't include me. On you this. are laughing. You did the You're script. encouraging. Well, you are encouraging. You are an adult. Yeah. So <laughs> I am responsible for myself, but yes. at, so are you. Yeah. Okay. And okay. Fine. Fine. Okay. Anyway, all German sparkling wine starts out as still wine and low in alcohol. And then a lot of it is a lot of it is turned into bubbly using the Prosecco, the Charmat method. So mm. the second fermentation takes place in a big vat where they add bubbles to it. Ah. Right? And that's actually cheaper to make and it's easier to make. And in fact, a lot of times when they make it in that style, they call it Secco, oh. which sounds a lot like sugar. Pro or, or Prosecco. Or Prosecco. Is it the Secco, like, well, I'm thinking Zucro. of Zucchero, Zucchero yeah. which is sugar, but maybe it has nothing to do with sugar. I, I don't know. You keep sweetness. wanting to say, I think you're hungry know, or something. She's been making cakes all day for baby cakes. I'm just going to tell you. Maybe I need a Ooh. cake for myself tonight. <laughs> you might. You might. I might. Some sect is made like champagne, fermented in the bottle, and you can find that language on bottles, evidently. If it's fermented in the bottle, the German wine will say it. Okay. And so that way you kind of know that it's more of a traditional or champagne style. Hmm. What was what was intriguing about this sect? Well, for me, I'm always intrigued by sect. But no, <laughs> um, t- to me it was just unusual like to find out that Germans made sparkling wine, but not only made it, they make a ton of it. It's just, it, it was just shocking to me. Hmm. And shocking to me that a country that makes so much sparkling wine, you can't find, like, because you can find kava all over the place. Right. And you can find U.S. sparkling wine all over the place. And you can find, you know, but you can't find, it's hard to find German sparkling wine. So it's wine. hard to find it, like, at wine places in yeah. the U.S. But yeah. it's all, but you have, have you been looking at restaurant a little, menus? A little bit, but, okay. and you just don't see it. Huh. You just don't see it. Okay. Back to sect. The wow. highest quality sect... <laughs> Because you want high quality, is usually grown in areas like Mosul in Germany, and we have a wine from Mosul in Germany, and a place called Burgenland in Austria. Oh. And they're often made from grapes that are native to Germany and Austria, like Riesling and Gewürztraminer. Mm. And in fact, we have one of the wines we're having tonight is sparkling wine made only from Riesling. So that'll be really interesting. Oh, we like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the, just a little bit more fun fact I'm going to use my German accents. 
cling oh, wine boy. made from Riesling is sometimes known as Riesling sect. Oh, wow. And again, it's pretty unique to Germany. Okay. It's not a common sparkling wine style or sparkling wine grape. Hmm. Uh, and again, an article, we have an article in a link in our show notes. It's an article from the Wine Spectator, and it describes sparkling German wines made from Riesling to be lively, fresh, tingling, aromatic, invigorating, with descriptions of fruity and perfumed. Wow. Mm, Has that got everything? Mm, Yeah. Nice. So now, evidently, over the last 30 to 40 years, the Germans and the Austrians have become a little bit more serious about the kind of sparkling wine they're producing. They have, they're being more strict about the quality. They have some very high quality, like Deutscher Sekt, which can only be made from German grapes. And the highest quality sect is called Winzer Sekt. And it's... (laughs) Bottle fermented and aged for at least nine months. Ah, which is nine actually, months of sect. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what happens after nine months yeah. after you've had sect. <laughs> Be careful out what there. What happens, actually? I don't know. No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you tell us, people. <laughs> okay. And the last thing we're, I'm going to talk about is that telling if a German sparkling wine is sweet or not is more confusing even than in English, okay? So, if the... (laughs) Especially if you don't speak German. Exactly. In the first place. In German, the word herb means brute, which is dry. And the word trocken means dry. But actually, when you use dry, when you're talking about sparkling wines, you actually mean a little sweet. So it's just the same confusing thing. You see dry and you're like, oh, it's dry, but it's actually a little bit sweet. So trocken, if you're having a trocken regular Riesling, it's a dry Riesling. But if you're having a trocken, trocken sparkling Riesling, it's sweet. You already lost me. I know, exactly. So I'm confused. Are you confused? I'm still confused. Okay. No, that, but, was, that helped. Yeah, but I think it's going to be fun because we've ha- we have had German wines. Yes. Uh, we don't drink a lot of German or Austrian wines, but we're starting to drink a few more. We're going to do another episode on an Austrian wine, and mm. ne- I think next week that'll nice. be interesting. But again, like I think having a sparkling wine from Germany is going to be really fun. Well, Just for see sure. What it's like. Yeah, and something different. And if you like sparkling, you might as well try a variety of... Of wines. Expand it a little bit. Right. Don't just have the same sect have, all the time. My goodness. Have sect with something well, else. Well, as long as you're, you know, protecting yourself. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know? That's true. Okay, should we talk about the wines that we chose for this episode, Carmela? I think we should, Joe. <laughs> okay, so as usual, all of the wines we have chosen for this episode are under $20. I, I'm not going to be able to say that anymore because of inflation. At some mm. point, I have to say something different. But And all of them should be easy or relatively easy to find because I did buy them at, on wine.com. Perfect. Um, and again... It may not be super easy to find German sparkling wines at your usual grocery store, but you should be able to find them at larger ones like Total Wine or Bevmo. And actually, I went to a large wine shop here in Seattle called Esquin. It's a big wine wine shop with a good selection, and they had German sparkling wines there. Hmm. So you can find them. You just kind of got to seek them out. Right, right. And even on Might wi- want to call ahead or look online. I- exactly. Hmm. And even on wine.com, they didn't have a ton. I will say overall, it's not like they had you know dozens and dozens and dozens of German sparkling wines. You hmm. just have to kind of... Of, you just kind of have to seek them out. Interesting. And we'll tell you today if they're worth seeking out. How right. about that? Okay. So the first German sparkling wine we're having today is called Henkel Finest Sparkling Wine Brut. Hmm. And I think anytime you have to put like best or finest in it, it's probably not. But this one is the also the least expensive one. It's a little bit over $10. So we're going to find mm. out. Mm-hmm. The winery describes the wine as French cuvee craft meets German artisanal production. Whoa. But I'm going to say this. They're a little cagey about the grapes in their wine. In fact, they say their wine is made from a cuvee of four selected wines, including Chardonnay. Boy. But what are the other ones? They don't give the other ones. That's what I'm saying. So Fondé I'm, are the finest. Huh? Yeah, that's that's mm. my that's why I'm like I'm that's not so sure weird. about that. I right. wonder if they're just you know it's like bottom of the barrel. Uh, just, it could be. Hmm. It could be. We're gonna find out. We're gonna, we're gonna see, find, and that might be the out. best part. It might be the best part. We're might be gonna the worst see. part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, and this wine is made in the Charmette method, and I think all of the wines we're trying today are in the Charmette method. Doesn't mean it's bad. That's the non-traditional. That's not the champagne method. It's right. again, it's the way prosecco, prosecco. is made. It's mm-hmm. just a way. They describe their wine as being an aperitif, which generally oh. means like a before dinner right. wine. Right. Um, and it's also relatively low in alcohol. So mm. a lot of times you can tell if a, how sweet a wine is going to be 
if it has lower alcohol. Right, it'll be sweeter, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So despite the fact that this wine says Brut in its name, mm -hmm. I'm not totally sure. I, I, I just have this gut feeling it's going to be on the sweet side. Hmm. But we're going to find out. It'll be interesting because we don't tend to actually go for the sweeter no. sparklings. No, so. we hmm. don't. Okay. Okay, the second wine we're drinking is called Fritz Müller, Müller mm -hmm. Thurgau Sacco. And they call themselves the German answer to Prosecco. So again, Secco, right? Wow. Now, a German wine journalist, I don't know where <laughs> this is on the interwebs, they said that this wine tingles <laughs> terrifically. Oh. Mm. Well, nothing wrong with tingly sect. No. Mm -hmm. I mean. If it's good, it might I make you really tingle tingle. I don't think there's a thing wrong with that. It can even make that. you tingle. Okay. okay. Anyway. That is not so great. <laughs> no, wine enthusiasts did. That's give, very different. That's weird. Okay. Wine enthusiasts did give the wine a 90 rating. Okay. Uh, they described this wine as semi-sparkling. Oh. And it's also made from a grape that I've never heard of before called the Mule Thurgau grape, which is also sometimes Maybe it's known like made up sounds like Okay, up. wait a minute. Just wait a minute. What? You're right. It's made up. It's also sometimes known as Riesling Sylvana, and it was made by a dude called Hermann Mule. He like, like Ferris Bueller. But, I don't know why. But Ham and Mueller, they might have been friends. It sounds similar. Mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. know. Okay, that's weird. Yeah. And and hmm. evidently, Herman, Elman Mueller in 1882, made a cross cultivation of Riesling with a grape called Madeleine Royale, which again is another grape I've never freaking heard of. How, so, did you search it? I did. Okay. I don't know very much about it, but it is also Germany's second most widely cultivated or planted grape. Weird. I know. We so a lot of things we don't know about German experts in English, though, no, because I wouldn't understand them if they yeah, spoke in German. Yeah, but I would like hey, if somebody out there is a German wine expert or aficionado, or just a fan. Right. I would reach out to us. Yes. Let we us wanna, know. We want to talk to you. Now, this uh, Madeleine Royale has a reputation of being bland and sweet. <laughs> bland and sweet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're going to see how good this wine is. Mm -hmm. Now, the wine is supposed to be fresh and fruity, and they even talk about making it into a Fritz Spritz. Hey. Because it's I Fritz Mule. That. Is there a um, recipe for that Spritz? There is, and oh. it uses Aperol, so it's just like Prosecco. What? It's but just not like Campari. a Prosecco. It's like Aperol Spritz. Aperol. It's an Aperol Spritz. Anything but I think else? that's more Any, like, common. Club? No, In, no, no, outside no. of Italy. Yeah. Outside of Italy. Okay. So are they adding like club soda to it as well, or like orange? Oh, or? You know what? I'm going to do this again. You know, take Look responsibility for yourself. Look, at, Look it up. I thought you said you had a recipe. Okay, sorry. Okay, anyway. Uh, this this We might have to make a spritz, a fritz spritz fritz, tonight. Fritz spritz. <laughs> and then uh, it does have trocken on the label, which means it might be on the sweet side. Okay. But I think that's typical. Like a Prosecco is often what they call it dry, which means sweet or you know, extra dry. So it's, that's common for right. that style of wine. Mm. Okay. So we're, we're going to find out how much we think it is like a Prosecco. It could be very much like a Prosecco. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the last wine we're going to try today is called Marcus Molotov Mosel Riesling Sacked. And so this, <sighs> this is the Riesling based sparkling. And again, it's sort of a specialty of German sparkling wine. Mm. And the winery has been producing sparkling wines only since the 1980s. And oh. this kind of coincides with when Germany was starting to get um, more serious about sparkling sect. wines, about sect, more serious about their sect. And Mosul is supposed to be where the best sect comes from. Wow. And so there you we go. We got to go there. Yeah. But this is actually also made in the Charmat method. I did kind of dig around. It was hard to find out information. Uh, but, they, but I figured it out because they say this. The grapes are carefully selected, crushed. And then the must is fermented in large wooden barrels. Now that's interesting. Hmm. Wooden barrels. Hmm. And then a second fermentation follows in tank. Uh -huh. So again, none of the wines that we're going to have today is made in the traditional method. They're all made in that Charmat method, which I think is interesting. Hmm. Anyway, and then a website I ran into called, I'm not kidding, Gus Clemens on Wine. Look up Gus, Gus Clemens on wine. He described this wine as an excellent QPR wine, which is oh, right up our alley. Hey. QPR, quality to price ratio. Yes. So, you know, we're going to... We're going to check it out. We're going to see if we think the QPR is really QPR, and we'll let you know. Mm. Uh, so I think this is going to be fun. It's we have so fun. We have three different sparkling wines from Germany. Mm -hmm. They're all a little different, made from different grapes or different blends. Uh, they're all the same style, but they're from also from different regions of Germany, as far as I understand. I've never been to Germany, so I'm not quite sure, but... I've been to Germany, you have but been to I Germany. drank more Bavaria. beer. You went to Bavaria, didn't right. you? Right. Well, oh, I was in Munich. Yeah. 
and That's I was the in, yeah, and I'm trying to think. Of, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so anyway, well, so, yeah, we don't need to talk about that. No, no, because that okay. was a long time ago. Right. Not that long ago. This was three or four years ago. Exactly. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> I haven't been around that long. No, no, you're right. You're right. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna take a break, and we're gonna try our first sect. Wow. Sect for the first time. A lot of sect tonight. This is our first time having sect. <laughs> okay. And on that note, we'll be right back. Okay, we are back, and we are ready to have sect for the first time. All right, Ooh. woohoo! Uh, same joke, uh, different. Uh, okay, anyway, this wine is called Henkel Finest Sparkling Wine Brut. It's from Germany, and it doesn't say where, so I just have Germany. It's non-vintage, which is most, you know, the years. It says non-vintage, which is, which is what t- kind of normal, typical though. for mm-hmm. sparkling wine. It was only twelve dollars and ninety-nine cents at wine.com. Mm. It's eleven and a half percent alcohol, which is, you know, it's not super atypical for a sparkling wine, but it is a little low, and the grape. Again, it's four grapes, including Chardonnay. That's what it's made okay, from. Okay, so, good to know. What are you smelling on this sparkling wine? Well, I am getting kind of like that. You, what you say sometimes, kind of like a brioche, like a sweet yeah. bread of yeah. some kind. Um, what a about yeasty, you? Little yeasty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm getting some apple-y kind of smell mm-hmm. on it. A little I'm bit of a little apple. apple and a little bit, of, maybe even a little pear. I, I'm actually getting a little pineapple too. Okay, little, are you getting a little, a little pineapple? tropical stuff going on? Huh? A little bit. Are you getting? Well, a little I'm bit getting. Of that? It's definitely like not a tart apple. We'll mm. see when we taste it. So that's why maybe it, I am getting a little bit of pear or something a little bit sweeter. On it does it. smell sweet too. I'm getting like sweetness on mm-hmm. it. Like Even you though don't it says brute. To, to spill because it would oh, be might be sticky. sticky on the floor, <laughs> and you don't want sticky sect. Okay, here we go. <laughs> or what maybe you, you do. Mm-hmm. All right, let's taste this. Sweet, it's sweet. Not it's not over overly, but it's it is definitely. You know what? It's kind of reminding me of hmm. like a soda. Ooh, it's kind of like a, a spark. S- like a, let me ask you this though: like an like a soda or like a sparkling cider? Uh, no, more like a soda. Like, like what I, kind of soda? Just any soda. Like, like the the bubbles to me feel sparkly. Like a like a no, they do like a. No, but like a soda, and the taste is sweet, like a soda. It's reminding me of a soda. Hmm. I, I like or it. Or a pop, or a soda pop. Depending on when you grew up. If you were in the 80s, you may say pop. Or where you're from. Or where you're from, true. Yeah. But oh. it has a little bit, I'm getting a little tropical fruit. Yes. I'm getting a little citrusy, but also a little tropical fruit with a little bit of almost grapefruity or something, a little bit of like bitterness on the end. It's yeah. not bad. No, it's not I, bad. I actually, it's kind of a nice change of pace. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit, it's different, but it's not, um, I wouldn't say it's like, you know, sometimes it, it, the sweetness, sometimes it can, it can be so overpowering that you can only have like a little bit and you're done. Yeah. I think you could finish this and be, you feel really good about this sect. This to me, <laughs> this to me is one of those wines you call dangerous. Yes. Actually, like you can just down it. Right, right. This actually goes down is pretty kind of refreshing yeah. and you might be able to just... Take it down. I th- I think so too. After a nice long run. <laughs> but while it's sweet, like your mom. Yes. Uh, but while it's sweet, it's not cloying. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's not that like super sweet. It's not syrupy sweet. No, it's not thick. It doesn't have that like Mm-mm. like um. No, it doesn't. You know, you're sometimes right. we say filminess. Mm-mm. It's not like that. No, you're right. It's cleansing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's pleasant. I like it. Like this is. I think if you just want to inexpensive sparkling wine for that's, any night of the week that's fine right this yeah. might not be something you're gonna do on your wedding day no unless you're <laughs> cheap unless you're cheap i mean and you might have sex on your wedding day <laughs> you might for the first time okay oh anyway what food would you pre- pair with this brut sparkling wine well the interesting thing is is that because it has that bit of sweetness on it i think you could do like a like a nice, uh, rich cheese okay. with it. I think good charcuterie. Is this not... the one they said was an aperitif? This mm, would be a good maybe, yeah. pre, pre-dinner wine. I, I think, think it'd be so. Good. Like good. you could do a creamy mm-hmm. brie mm-hmm. and a puff pastry with mm-hmm. it too. I just kind of, for some reason I'm thinking something, yeah, like some sort of cheese board. You know what would be good with this too? What? Like french fries or tater tots. Ooh. Something kind of fried oh my, would be good and yeah. salty. <gasps> something fried and salty would be pretty good. This would be, be fun for good. like game day. Oh, that's a good one. You I know, like that. Because it's kind of ce- celebratory. The Kraken are playing. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's something celebratory, but you can have like yeah. game day food with it. I like it. Because mm. it's inexpensive. It's something like 
you could buy a bunch of bottles and it's fine and people are going to like it. I, I agree. People are going to like this. And, and I think actually spicy, like I could see this with like spicy chicken wings mm-hmm. or something like that. You know, yes. Like, yeah. So I don't think it's a, it's not like fish. I don't think it's a fish wine. No, I don't think so either. It's not like elegant or delicate enough for, I agree. you know, something about and it. And too sweet. Yes. I think it would kind of overpower mm-hmm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let's rate this wine. So as a reminder on our rating scale, what we do is we rate on a scale of one to 10, where seven and above means, hey, this is good. We're going to buy it. And a four below means, ooh, this is crap. We ain't going to buy it. <laughs> and five or six means we'll probably drink it, and but we may look for something different. But we're it's fine. Like, it's good. It's fine. And mm. It's good enough to drink, mm-hmm. but we're not going to buy it. This is a tough one for me. I have to say, this is a tough one for me. Well, I'm thinking that I would buy this. Okay. I think that I would. I kind of think I would, too. I, you know, I, don't I think wasn't so a, sure about it. It wouldn't be like a go-to. Like, if, if you and I were just having it, I don't know if I would buy it. But if we were buying it for a group of people... Party. Yeah, I feel it's like it would be a good wine. choice. It's a good party wine. Yeah, I, I, think, I think you're right. Like a... a game day. A game day of, wine. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So I'm going to give it a seven. I am, too. Okay. I'm giving it a seven. Look at us. I kind of like it. Good. I didn't think I should like it. Your first time, and you liked it. Oh, first bit of sect, and I'm, I'm hooked. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. We are going to take a break, and we are going to have sect for the second time. Awesome. Woo. <laughs> Okay, so we're back. We gotta get we gotta get to the sect. Okay, wow. uh, so here we are. Our second one. This is the Fritz Müller Müller Thurgau Sacco, and this wine is interesting for a couple of reasons. Just right off the bat, first, it's a screw cap. So I don't yeah, think I've ever. That is so cool. Well, it's just very different for a sparkling. Like I've had bottle cap. That's not right. that unusual. And obviously the champagne cork, but I don't think I've ever had a screw cap sparkling wine. The it's second, really weird looking. It's kind of weird looking. The other thing is, I think they mentioned this when we were like describing it. It is not very bubbly. No. It, it has hardly any bubbles at all. I wonder okay. if it's going to taste bubbly. Though. I don't know. I'm very <laughs> curious. Okay. So this is the one they call a secco. Remember mm. that too. So this is from Germany from Ryan Heisen. It's non-vintage as well. This was 1999, so this was on the expensive side. Right. We got it at wine.com, 11.5% alcohol, so the same amount of alcohol as the last one. The grape is the Müller Thurgau. Okay, so let's see what we smell on this Müller Thurgau. Hmm. Kind of similar smells, I would say. It's pretty mild, though. It's hard. I mean, mm-hmm. we, this is a good pour you gave me, and I'm not getting a lot on I'm not getting a lot on it. I guess I'm it smells getting... smells kind of thin. I think I'm getting a little apple. Hmm. But it's a little bit, there's a little bit of bitterness on there. I really? I think it's really yeasty, but. You got a better nose. Stone. Tonight, for sure. Getting a little like stony stone on it. Hmm. There's something interesting. Almost like a, like a stone fruit, maybe. Really? Like a peach? Kind of. Okay. Yeah, maybe. I can't smell a lot on it. I'm not <laughs> getting. Have you got a cold? No. Okay. Well, let's taste it. I'm kind of getting a little peach in the taste. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think it's got a little stone fruit, a little, a little bitterness again. I mean, like, more, like, more bitterness yes, than the last I'm one. I'm just saying bitterness is what you, you were, whoops, sorry. Boy. You were smelling. Pointing at me. <laughs> <laughs> you were smelling. <laughs> you had that sect and you were smelling. <laughs> okay, that's weird. It smells like sect. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay. That is really enough. But anyway. It is so. not, it's fizzy. Kind of, but it's not super bubbly. How do you feel about that? I don't know. I kind of want my wine to be bubbly. This is not like a, like they say it's secco, but it's not, proseccos are pretty bubbly. I think so. And I'm I'm getting a lot of bitterness in it, especially at the tail end. Mm-hmm. It's a little peachy mm-hmm. and it's sweet, but I don't know if it's as sweet as the last one. Mm-mm. I disagree. Really? I think it's sweeter. Oh, wow. I'm okay. getting a little bit of honey. Oh. I'm getting a little honey taste in it. Mm. Are you getting agave. any honey? Or no? a little maybe, maybe. I'm getting a sweetness on it. I am like too. Really but sweet. I don't know. There's quite the bitterness is over. It's a little standing out to me more than hmm. the sweetness. The other one was a little smoother to me. Mm-hmm. Didn't have such a bite. This has more of a bite on it. For sure. Mm. Yeah, for sure. What do you think about what you would eat with this? Mm. I don't know. This is a tougher one kind of feel like this is almost an after dinner drink okay i don't even feel like it's a before dinner drink i, I don't think like it's a you dinner wouldn't drink. have a lot you wouldn't prefer to have as much to eat with it 
I don't. I mean, I, I'm, that's why I'm thinking it's like kind of more of a dessert. It felt, it feels like a dessert wine to me. Right. And that might be because we tend to like really dry, sparkling wines. And so, you know, this is only, it's troken, you know, which is dr- dry, you mm-hmm. know, for so semi, semi sweet or on the slightly sweet side. But to me, it's, it's, it's like, I feel like I want to have a donut. You know what? I was almost going to, well, donut, yes. Or like, I feel like you could do like a vanilla ice cream. Yeah. Tot- totally. You know, and fruit. I think you'd have fruit with it. Right. Oh, you know, for like, sure. Like mm-hmm. strawberries or and peach, blueberry peach. peaches yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah. But it, to me, it's kind of like more desserty than it is. But, you know, sometimes after dinner, mm-hmm. they'll have like a cheese right. and fruit plate well, as kind of a desserty yes. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I could see it with that. Yeah. I could. I mean, yeah, but I could also, I could see it like with the like fruit, like with a whipped cream fruit, you know, with yeah. Fruit or okay. ice cream. Mm-hmm. Or I'm going back to that again. But definitely, no, I can see it with... I just think you're right. It might actually complement a dessert course. I think so. I mean, it would be really kind of fun to have a sparkling for a dessert course anyway. Yeah, I could see if you were having like a little celebration and mm-hmm. you wanted to do something like, we're going to bring out this sparkling wine for dessert. It's kind of fun. Yeah. And so, I, you know, hmm. it's, it's just... It's not usually what I would have. No. So I think this is important because we're going to give our rating. But I think it's important for you to know, like, our rating is, my rating, I'll just say this, I don't know about you, but my rating is going to be biased by the fact that I don't really like sweet wines, and I don't really like sweet sparkling wines. Mm. And so I'm probably going to, if you like sweet wines or sweet sparkling wines, I think you might really like this wine. Right. I think you might really want to give it a shot. So not not judging. Like, you may no, say, Joe, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't like sweet wine. So it's fine. Like, I'm just, so just understand that the rating is my taste, and you may feel very differently about it so what rating are you going to give well i think i'm going to give it um i think i'll give it a six yeah because i i'm I'm not going to go out of my way to probably buy it but i would i think it would be uh, i would find it enjoyable Mm -hmm. if i was having it somewhere and again had it in that in that situation having it yeah so I'm giving it a six. Yeah, I'm giving it a generous six. I could go with a five. I'm tempted to give it a five. Again, remember, like five or above is like a pretty good score for us. Mm-hmm. I just, it would have to be so situational for me, right. for me to buy it. Mm. So it's not like I'm going to stuff it in, in like, we're not going to get a, a call from our FedEx delivery driver with a bunch of this wine. But if I'm thinking about a special occasion or a certain occasion, I might buy this wine. Mm-hmm. Or if I know somebody really likes sweet wine. I would get True. this for them. Remember, I would remember yeah. this. Yeah. I, I would really, I think they would enjoy it and I think they'd have fun with it. Hmm. But this to me is kind of wine that I think I'm going to get a headache if I drink too much of it. Oh boy. It's just me. It's just me. You can yeah, get a headache there will after be no sect. sect. No. <laughs> Not tonight. I've got a headache. Okay. On that, we're going to try sect for the third time. All right. We'll be right back. Okay. We are back and we are ready to try our last wine. And I'll say like, a couple of things that we noticed. One is, again, not super bubbly, this next wine. Mm. So none of them have been super bubbly. Definitely bubbles, but much finer. Finer and not just, they're, they're just, it seems less effervescent. Yes. Yeah. The other is the wine bottles. So the, the the two that have like a not screw cap that have the regular cork, the wine bottle is not, a lot of times like a sparkling wine or a champagne wine bottle will be kind of like have a fatter bottom, like a wider, mm-hmm. wider bottom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And these are just more like a regular wine bottle. Yes. So that's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, this one is called Marcus Molitor Mosel Riesling Sect. This is from Mosel, Germany, which is supposed to be where the best sparkling wine in Germany comes from. It's again, another non-vintage, 1999, like the last one, from wine.com. This is 12.5% alcohol. So this is uh, most alcohol of the three. So another indication that it should be drier, and it is called Brute. Uh, and this is made from Riesling. This is the one that's made just from Riesling. So what are you smelling? Well, again, it's kind of subtle to me. I don't know why. These are not giving me a huge bouquet on them. But this one to me is a little bit more like a more traditional kind of apple-y. I'm getting that apple, that yes. sparkling and apple it's not cider. Like, and I don't know if it's quite like a tart apple. No. I'm, I'm Again, sparkling apple cider, I'm getting a little cinnamon or a little spice, like a little baking spice on it. Mm. Are you getting any of that? bit and maybe even a touch of vanilla Mm, maybe a little vanilla okay i do i smell that and a sweet bread like Mm -hmm, a sweet bread mm -hmm. like a croissant no actually even more like a hot cross bun like a sweet really sweet yeah like a croissant wouldn't be yeah like a sweet bread like an easter bread or something oh interesting okay that's what i'm getting okay let's taste it and see what we think okay Mm. appley 
Definitely. Really this apple. This is the one that's really coming out as apple. And spicy. Don't you think spicy? Yeah. And at first, it's, oh, I thought it was going to be bitter again. But it's I think a little it's, bitter. I think it's more, like you said, a little more spicy. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of those baking spices. Mm-hmm. Not just cinnamon, but I think even like some clove or mm-hmm. allspice. I think so too. Yeah. Almost I, I, kind of a... Um, like a holiday sparkle. I was thinking the same thing. Oh. Like like a warm sparkling cider that you yeah. might have during the holidays. Mm. It's kind of got that flavor to it. I'm totally it's with you 100%. Me, here we're in spring, but it's feeling like fall. So this might be actually a really good sparkling for like the holidays. Mm-hmm. You know, like a really nice holiday sparkling wine. It is bubblier than the last one for sure. For sure. It's got decent bubbles. Like it's it's fine. The color The color of all of these wines has been pretty light yes, too. Yes, yeah. But it's I kind of like the finish on it. It's it's smoother than the second one, maybe more like that first one. I think it's a little bit more refined. Mm-hmm. I think it's a little a little bit more complexity in it. It's a little more interesting. It's got nice dryness on it. Mm-hmm. I'm like this is more I think a little bit more our style I too. I think so. Yeah. And the front of it so nerdy, but the front of it is sweet, but the back of it, you know, get it in the front and the back. That's sect. I'm not even. You know, I know you're not playing that game, but um, it's, it's a long time of marriage. Anyway, oh wait, I didn't even want you. To, I don't even know what I don't you're know, talking about. I don't know what I, I don't know what I'm talking about either. But it's got nice dryness on the end. This Oof. is like rated R. Now. Well, it's always rated R. It's about freaking wine. Okay, true. Like this is, but ladies and gentlemen, this is not a podcast made for children. Okay, if you haven't figured that out already, like it's time to. It's get, not carpool it's material. Not, well, it might be carpool, but not you know your children should be in high school. Okay, it's not for your no, little kids. Uh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't think high school kids have sect? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> No, okay, that is none of my business. Oh boy. Okay, what food might you pair with this <laughs> sect? Wow. Well, if I was to eat with this sect, I would have. No, I think this is a little more versatile. Yeah, agree. I think you could have like a pasta primavera with mm. it or something. I'm thinking like you could have this as a dinner wine. I think I think so, but I to me this is more like. Really good with Asian food. Really good with spicy foods. Indian foods. This would be oh, you really want to do good. Spicy. You want I'm, to do and spicy. I'm thinking about the types of spices that you would get. So I think Indian mm. food would be really good with this wine because it does have like that cinnamony, clovey okay. kind of some of those. Okay. You know, in Indian food sometimes they use spices that we consider in the United States to be a little bit more desserty, but they'll yeah. put them in in some of their more savory foods and it's delicious, you know? Well, you do, you always, you usually tend to go towards those spicy foods and mm-hmm. you go towards Asian spicy foods. Now, mm-hmm. what do you think in Germany they're eating with this? Like spa- spicy sausage? And- I don't know, but you know, okay, so here's a, I think like a, a schnitzel. Like I think it would be good with a schnitzel, you yeah. know, which is like like a breaded. I thought it was cutlet a sausage, but then no, you told not. me later. No, yeah. it's like a breaded cutlet. I think this would be really nice with that, with a little lemon on it. I think this would right. be really I, good with it. I think that would be really good, and I think that's why I'm kind of going down because you because you do tend to do the spicy food, but but within the Asian yeah market type of. But but I even think Middle Eastern food would be really good with oh, this. Okay, yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. in Middle Eastern foods they'll have the like ground meat, but it'll have some of those cinnamony or kind of like. More, you know, warmer baking warm, spices, yeah, that, baking are, spices yeah, that they use in a savory dish. I think it would be really good. Mm. I think it would be really good. Be really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could definitely have this as a dinner course, though, like along a dinner course. Whereas, like the one before this, I wouldn't. No, suggest no, 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 it. No, no, no. This is nice, though. I like I, this. I will say they all have been a little bit. Maybe it's just in my head. They all have been a little bit on the sweeter side. I think, I think. so. I think they're sweeter than a Prosecco. Well, I mean, Prosecco can be sweet, but no, Prosecco I think this is... Sweet. I'm not really sure. It'd be kind of interesting to do a comparison. Well, but. Riesling, like this is made from Riesling. And Riesling is a pretty sweet right. grape. Mm-hmm. So anyway, mm. okay, what rating are you going to give this one? I'm going to give this one a seven. Yeah, okay. What about um, you? I'm going to give it a... I'm I'm tempted to give it an eight. I'm going to give it a seven. I'm going to give it a... A strong seven? Know, I'm going to give it an eight. Oh. Okay. I'm giving it a, I feel okay. good about it. I would buy this wine. Okay. I would definitely buy this wine. I think it's fun. I think it's different. I think if you're saying, hey, let's have sect, you know, like wow. this is what you're going to have. first time, this might yeah. be the one, yeah. you know, the one that convinces them it. that they want to have sect with you, right? Wow. Okay. Okay. All right. So here we go. Which one of these are you finishing tonight, Carmelita? Well, we've had a lot of sect. Mm-hmm. So I'm just yeah. not sure. <laughs> no, I think that I think that we 
or I would probably have this third one. Okay. The Marcus, or say it for me. It is the Marcus Molitomusel Riesling sect. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. It sounds like so passionate. So sexy. (laughs) So sexy. That's one you're going to have? Yeah, I think so. I think I would too, but my second choice is the Henkel. The first one. Yes, for sure. Okay. For sure. So here's where we're going to talk about the taste profiles expected from gym and sparkling wine. In general, it says it will vary by, I got this off the interwebs, vary a ton by the type of grapes and the style of winemaking, but German wines are often dry, crisp, and lots of acidity. I do think they have quite a bit of acidity. Mm-hmm. Okay, Henkel, the winemaker says, subtle aromas of citrus and tropical fruits, okay. crisp, full-bodied, well-balanced with excellent acidity. And the website, slightly different, even though it's still the winery, delicate aroma of golden apple, Williams pears, citrus, oh. and a hint of brioche. Hey, we did okay there. Really wow. well. Because mm-hmm. I think we even said tropical fruit, right? You said pineapple, mm-hmm. apple, I said pear, sweet brioche. Yep. Interesting. The Fritz Müller wine enthusiast says it's gorgeously floral, but with a oh. chalky with a chalky earthen tang, sprightly acidity, and a fresh green touch. Green. Fresh green touch, like grass? I guess, yeah. Mm. Or herbal. Okay. Lends vibrance to a moderately long finish. And the winemaker says... I would agree with the long finish. I I agree. Uh, The winemaker says pale straw yellow with green highlights, fresh and fruity aromas of green apple and grapefruit, Hmm. mild and balanced taste with exotic notes and delicate muscat tone. Okay. Okay. And then the Marcus Molitor Riesling winemaker notes, the aromas are reminiscent of ripe pear, red apple, grapefruit, nectarine, and white peach. Notes of brioche, stone, and white pepper on the palate. Clear, lively, refreshing with a fine bubble and refreshing mineral finish. And then Gus Clemens says, deep gold color, apricot, pear, nectarine, apple, almond on the nose. Apricot, Meyer lemon, apple, pear, brioche, minerality on the palate. Mm, So they were not getting the spiciness. And nobody no. was talking about the spiciness on no, it. No, not really, no. A hmm. little bit of white pepper. I think the the winemaker said white pepper, mm-hmm. but I was getting a lot more spice on that. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah super just interesting. Different palette. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, what do you think overall of sect? I, I think <laughs> do I you will like have sect? it again. <laughs> I think I will. I think it's definitely worth trying. Yeah, It's for definitely sure. worth having sect. It's definitely worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My goodness. Oh, God, we're so funny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, but I would. I think it's worth seeking out. For sure. No. We said we would do that. Is it worth seeking out German sparkling wines? I do think Especially so. Especially if it's the third mm-hmm. in the uh, world, right? Yeah, third largest producer. Yeah. So it's like it is definitely worth your time. And if I you're think, a sparkling wine drinker, yeah. for sure. And again, I think if you tend towards sweeter sparkling wines, really good choice. This could be really for you. Yeah, you might really like it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Carmela, it's... Just about time for us to go. But before we do, we want to thank you again very much for listening to us. And if you haven't done so yet, do it now. Now is the time to subscribe to the podcast. And do it now. Now is the time to leave a rating and review. Uh, And that will be an awesome free way to support us and let people know about us. And we'd love to hear from you. If you know anything about German wines, we'd love to know more. uh, Because it really is an area that we don't know much about, German wines specifically. We're just Mm -hmm. learning. So you can leave a message for us on our website at thewinepairpodcast.com. You can email us at joe at thewinepairpodcast.com and we'd love to hear from you if there's other wines you want us to try or other regions that you think are underrated or we're not we're not talking about enough let us know we would love to hear that and then the next time you listen to an episode drink along with us and maybe Mm. have some sect sure while you listen you don't need to tell us that no don't tell us all right with that bad joke over the course of this whole episode we're gonna sign (laughs) off so thanks again and we'll see you next time and as we say life is short so stop drinking shitty wine. Bye-bye. Bye. And the happy ending at the end of our story. Always think too much. <laughs>